So here we are with our five gallon challenge. Let's go. On the last episodes of the five gallon bug out challenge, we recovered our five gallon bucket of supplies stashed in the woods. I gotta find my stash. Oh, this is starting to look familiar. The cedar bush here by this big giant cedar tree here. Pull this out of the ground to be able to survive. Quickly and conveniently pull it out of the ground. Nothing can stick up above here. You can't have a saw, an ax, a knife, or anything protruding. Built a shelter. Too big for the tarp. Hunted squirrels. There's a squirrel up in the tree here somewhere. Caught fish. Set primitive traps. Ate raccoon. Because a raccoon is not a food. <laughs> it is a survival food. It's not a food. Keep rotating it. Keep her warm. Located drinkable water. Mm, not bad. And spent the night. Well, good morning guys. I just got the fire restarted. I've been kind of lazy this morning, chilling out and warming up because it was a, it was a doozy. I slept well. I mean, I slept okay. I mean, I woke up a couple times and loaded up the fire, but um, you know, you can't really complain. When you're sleeping under a tarp, you're just gonna get that kind of sleep. But I do like the open air feel of tarp. Like if you ever slept open air, you know, you can actually just breathe better because um, the air just moves away from you. I don't know, it's difficult to explain because most people just sleep indoors and they don't have that airflow. I actually sleep with a fan, I'm one of those guys, but mostly for the noise. But just, you know, like a CPAP machine where it's just constantly feeding you fresh new air and you don't have to work or struggle for it. That's how I feel with open air kind of camping. But you can't do that for most of the time because of mosquitoes and biting insects. So you gotta enjoy it while you can. Well, I gotta be honest with you guys. I, uh, I've been sleeping in hoping that this problem would fix itself. It's uh, good news and it's bad news, I guess. The good news is the trap worked. The other good news is we got something to eat. The bad news is I don't know if I wanna eat it. Also, bad news is I don't think it's ready to be eaten yet because it's still alive. And an, a trapped animal is, it's a, it's, can be a problem. Um, it also can be, you know, easily dealt with, except for this one particular animal. And the reason is because it is a sort of dangerous animal, but not in the way you might think. It's not like a coyote. It's not coyote dangerous. It's more like stink dangerous. <laughs> so anyway, this thing, I don't know how long it's been in the trap, but I know it's been in the trap because I have the uh, reveal tacticam on it and I can see that it's been moving around still and it looks to me like on this approach it may be still breathing. Shoot, it's moving. <clears throat> it's 
you can tell it's still alive because the tail's got some turgor to it. I mean, it's not laying down flat. The fur is puffed up. When an animal dies, all that, per that fur flattens out. Um, as long as the tail's down, I'm okay. But what I need to do is be able to get like some kind of headshot on it. Like with the slingshot will be okay, but I can't see its head. And in order to be able to get a headshot, I need to be able to go around here and do an alternate approach. And its head has to be visible somehow. And I know as soon as its head's visible, it's going to want to turn around. It can't spray me with the tail down. It can only do that with the tail up. Oh yeah, okay. So it's definitely alive. <clears throat> Besides hitting it in the head, the slingshot, I could also whack it with a stick, but that's a lot more dangerous. Okay, so it is alive. It did twitch. Um, it doesn't look like it's able to turn around. So as long as it can't get its tail up and aim, I mean, it could just panic squirt too. And that's the whole thing. I have eaten um, skunk before. It's it, it's 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 a process. It's a surgeon's it's a surgeon's process because you actually have to be able to uh, clean it without it spraying on you. So we're about we're in shooting distance right now. I gotta I gotta say, I just I just don't know what to do here exactly. So we're just approaching with caution, and I gotta make sure I've got an exit route um, pre-planned because I may have to bail. I got the tail up anyway. Okay, that's not good. Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh shit. It can still get the tail up. Alright. Okay, so that was a good trial. I just threw a stick at it and then I fell in the swamp. Cause it's it's just gonna panic squirt. Oh, it's getting it's getting rigged up. Oh boy. She's getting rigged up. rigged up here. I got all my slingshot ammo in this pouch and uh, we're going to approach a long way because if I go straight in the beeline here I'm going to end up right right down the chute. Got this, uh, I sell these on my, uh, in the description you can find slingshot and all that good stuff. So, all right, let's so make our way through there. We got the GoPro situated. And it's just a funnel here. So it funnels me right into the dang thing. I think I'm gonna have to go the long way. keeps turning its tail towards the sound. I really need to get a headshot here. So I'm aiming for that little white line there is that's its head that's the top of its head needle a little bit lower than that
Oh, there we go. That's the one. That's the one. Oh, and he's gonna, I gotta, oh geez. Oh geez, he's letting go. Oh, oh, and I'm downwind. Shoot, oh, oh, he just sprayed. Oh, his tail's up and he's letting go. Oof. I got a feeling that as soon as I put the finishing touches on, he's gonna just let go. Whoa. And the wind's just, the wind's right in my face here too. Ah, finally it's done. At least I think it is. Yeah, it's done. Oof. Everywhere. Bur oh my God. Oh, it's letting go now. <coughs> oh. Within a 30, I could just. Oh, I taste it. it burnt tire, man. Ooh, that burnt my throat. Oh my god. I don't. It's not even spraying. It's just letting, it's letting loose. Oh my god. Ooh. Ooh. even over here. Oh, I'm gonna throw up. I don't know which way the wind is going anymore, but it's swirling, I guess, because it's. I'm getting it everywhere. Oh my gosh. Everywhere over here. Oh my god. That thing is built like a freaking tank. You always got to have gloves around to mess with these guys. These guys carry some nasty, nasty stuff, including rabies. It's the one of the most common carrier of rabies. Silent rabies, too. Like, they may be asymptomatic. They may look fine, but they're actually not. Oof. Oh, every once in a while, just get a taste of it. Oh my gosh. I got to get upwind of this thing. Oh, oh, oh. That thing is still letting a rip. Oh, oh my, oh my. Absolutely revolting. Oh, oh it's stinky though. I'll tell you what. Oh. Stinky badanky. You reek, buddy. Oh. It's a perfect behind the neck catch, too. So I'm not sure what's up with that. But didn't want to. I didn't want to leave planet Earth, that's for sure. Whew. There we go, guys. We got ourselves a delicious skunk. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna eat this guy. Uh, I have eaten skunk before. They are definitely not delicious, nor are they very nutritious, and they just carry a lot of risks. They carry like every single parasite, like a raccoon carries. Plus, they can also carry rabies. Actually, the most common source of rabies. But it doesn't have a nice pelt, and the glands are actually useful for trapping. So I can pay that forward. And use that to trap other animals like coyotes and other animals that are curious about skunk smell. They just, it's a curiosity kind of thing and they go into it. So anyway, it's actually a good looking skunk. It's got nice fur. So that'll go in the uh, fur pile with the other uh, raccoon. We'll make use of that. Glands and all, the meat, I don't know. Something else will have to eat it. Scavengers, birds love to eat. They'll, birds will eat anything. But uh, I'm pretty impressed with this trap. It worked really good. Um, there's a lot of dog food. There's still that uh, fish head in there, but man, this thing is smelly. It just keeps putting off burnt tire smell to me. Oh my God. Okay. I got it. I'm done. <coughs> Stanky. There we go. Keep it there. Be safe for now. Oh, it smells like burnt tire. Real bad. Whew. Stanky. Oh, look. I didn't even notice that, but looks like something else died here. There's a whole femur. Look at that. That's interesting, isn't it? 
a whole femur bone. Here's the pelvis. It's pretty neat. The pelvis fits inside. Got to figure out which way it goes. Does it go like that? Like that. There, ball and socket. There she goes. It's pretty cool. Uh, what's that? That must be the lower part. And that connects into the knee bone. There's the knee bone. Like so. That looks right. And then the foot would go on the bottom. What else do we have here? There's a scapula. Here's a jaw. So we, now we know it is a carnivore because it's got the canines and sharp pointy teeth. So that's a meat eater for sure. Here's another femur. Oh, there's the skull. There we go. That looks like a little coyote. So you got the, uh, the bottom jaw and the top jaw there. That's pretty cool. I wonder if the other jaw is there. There's another scapula. Uh, scapula, there's rib bones. It's another, that looks like a clavicle, I would guess. It's missing a jawbone. So, I don't know where it went. Something buggered off with it. What else is in there? Oh, there's the spine. Spinal column, part of the spinal column, there's the other part. Some kind of bird of prey overhead. I think it must be smelling the uh, skunk and the rotten fish heads and everything like that. And uh, they know what's up. They smell a skunk, they skunk, and a skunk active during the day, they know what's up. Something's going on. So they're coming in to investigate. Lost my boot. All right, let's get back to camp and take care of more business. Let's see if there's any fish in there. There's a couple minnows in there. That's about it. I don't see any any fish. It's always good to check. You never know. There might be a turtle in there or. Snapping turtle would be good to eat. Oh, you can kind of tell that this is spring fed because there's a lot of silt down here in the bottom. I'll show you. You can see it's moving this silty stuff down. And that's a pretty telltale sign that there's a lot of movement and flow. And that also means it's probably coming from a ground source because it's coming from up here in the mountain. It just keeps coming. So it's going to come from some kind of source up there. And uh, it's going to be filtering through all this stuff, so it's going to be a lot safer to drink. So this is a better source to drink from than the one I've been drinking at the lowlands, because this basically is clean and it's flowing down into the not-so-clean lowland stuff where all the animals are living. So I'm going to be exploring this one as a water source now, from now on. It's always kind of unnerving to be away from camp after dark, because first of all, if you get disoriented, <laughs> We made that shelter for no reason at all. <laughs> and that's just that. But then, you know you're gonna be without fire unless you were smart enough, like I was, to bring my lighter with me. Always keep your lighter with you. And make sure it's in a secure pocket because it can easily fall out. But you don't wanna be without your shelter. You don't wanna be too far away after dark. You probably wanna have your flashlight with you, which I wasn't smart enough to bring. But I didn't think I was going to end up that far. And uh, now I can see the smoke from my fire, so I'm on the right track. So because I don't have a uh, canteen or anything to carry water, and I'm kind of tied to my water source, um, 
So I'm before bed, before dark, completely before dark, I'm gonna get a good bunch of water and I'm gonna store it in my stomach instead of storing it in a pot or a container. So I got my uh, life straw with me here. I'm gonna sip a belly full of water. Should be enough for nighttime. It's one of those things I really gotta pay attention to and monitor because, well, if I get too far from water, I'm gonna be in trouble. But uh, if I stay dehydrated, hydrated, not dehydrated, hydrated, then uh, I'll be fine as long as I pay attention to it and it can last a day or two, probably these cooler temperatures. I shouldn't de dehydrate too fast. <clears throat> That's just kind of a whole nother level of taste. It actually tastes like pretty pure actually, but I wouldn't definitely not drink the swamp water without it, some kind of purification. Ah, it's quenching anyway. Well, last time you guys got a kick out of my fireside chat, so we're gonna do another one. I'm gonna try one more. If you guys like it, we'll continue doing it. If you don't like it, let me know down below and I'll stop. So this one, I don't want it to be uh, too controversial, but I think you should be aware of it. I've been trying to come up with a different topic to try it so that it's not like, it doesn't agitate anybody, but I'll, I'll try to handle it tactfully, put it that way. Put, okay, so this is how it goes. If you're counting on somebody to come and rescue you, uh, like a bigger governing body that's gonna come and swoop in and just solve all your problems, forget it. It's not gonna happen. There's an evolution in the sphere of uh, control where you have complete liberty, anarchy, and that progresses to some level of order. Let's call it some level of democracy and uh, things become complacent because things are working really well and the people have power and businesses are successful, people are successful, they're generating income, they're innovating, they're creative, they're, they're just doing lots of things that solve lots of people's problems but everybody's working individually and contributing because they're motivated to do that. And after a while it gets too easy because well things are going well and then pe people com become complacent and then the people that don't want to work a lot, but that are psychopaths, uh, start accumulating power when we're not noticing, and they start to run things inside of a democracy, or so-called democracy anyway. Um, and then they become a little bit more autocratic and authoritarian. So I don't know where we are in the cycle, but we can guess. Um, you know, things are going, we're going well, and things don't seem to be going as well anymore because we started to listen to the psychopaths. Um, so without becoming too controversial, I just want you guys to think about where we are in this cycle of, you know, power and the direction that we're headed in and then what kind of role you want to play in that future. Um, obviously, at some point in time, those autocratic uh, governments, let's say, or people become, they, they get overthrown and that's not a good place either because total freedom is not a good thing. Um, I'm a centrist. I like some order. I like a lot of order, actually. I just don't like uh, abuse of order, uh, taking advantage of individuals, let's say. And I don't believe that, you know, people should have uh, total power over everybody else, period. Individuals or groups of people. And a lot of, a lot of people put the blame on corporations and call them greedy. Well, here's the thing. The same people and I try to talk to the smoke here. The same people that run greedy corporations are gonna run greedy governments. And they're just gonna move from the greedy corporation to the greedy government, wherever that power is, because they're psychopaths. So I want you to be aware of who you might think are psychopaths. And uh, anybody who has power, a little bit of power, but is not satisfied with that little bit of power and then goes out and gets more power is probably a little bit weird. I mean, lots of people like power 
uh, but hopefully they take the responsibility that comes along with it. So that's a cue. If they're not taking responsibility for the power that they have wielding over people and they're not using that power for good, they're probably a little bit off their rocker and they're probably out for themselves. Most people are out for themselves anyway and you have to be because that's the only way that people work. So you do have to make sure that you take care of yourself. So all along these things are happening right now. We might be at the end of like the Roman Empire, let's say, and all empires fall because they become apathetic and they become lazy and they become complacent and they become trusting and then they just don't want to mind their own business. They want somebody else to mind their business too because they don't think they have to mind their own business. You have to mind your own business. So start minding your own business and start getting yourself ready for what I think is probably inevitable as far as the uh, power cycle goes, let's say. And there are lots of cues and signs. Even our own guy said there's a rise in authoritarian governments. Well, how would he know if there's a rise in authoritarian governments? Hmm, maybe he's participating. You ever think of that? Um, and there's a lot of looting of the treasury going on. It seems because there's just lots of money to loot right now. It's just an abundance. So I don't think this naturally is like something we can do anything about. We just play through the cycle and we live through that era that we happen to be blessed with, let's say. And every era is a little bit different and every area is uncomfortable in many different ways, which is exactly why I advocate for survival skills. Because no matter what era you're living through, those skills of self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and survival skills will always be an asset. Always. No matter what you're living through. So you can take that to the bank and you can use that information for whatever you want. But I do want you to think about where we are in this cycle and uh, what you're going to do about it. All right. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoy these talks, let me know. She's dark. She's sitting in there. I'm gonna make sure I got my flashlight. Dig it out of the five gallon here. There we go. Got my flashlight handy because you never know what's gonna happen in the middle of the night. And uh, probably throw my jacket on here too. Um, I'm not cold right now, but any point in time I might be, and I don't want to be fussing with that. I'll just keep it on unbuttoned for now and uh, I'll do it up if I need to there's not a whole lot to do after dark so we much get hunkered in and settle down so I'll see you guys in the morning and uh, we'll see what else we can get as far as food goes good night
Thought I heard an animal over there. Maybe not. Good morning, couldn't sleep anymore. Actually, I might go back to bed, I don't know. I thought the sun was coming up, but it looks like maybe it's just the moon. <laughs> uh, that's the trick, I don't have a watch. I never have a watch, so I never know what time it is, but I might sit up and maybe I'll listen, see if there's some squirrels gonna chirp at me and maybe get one walk by or, I don't know, maybe hear those turkeys yelping. I need to get a drink of water too. most of the raccoon there last night but I don't think I'm gonna eat it this morning there's uh, some creepy crawlies in it this morning that uh, is making my stomach curdle so I guess we're gonna hope that we have some other food in our traps because otherwise we're going hungry I was counting on have, at least having a little bit of breakfast but uh, yeah not so much we might have to go fishing again we'll see well, quick look over the traps. There's not much going on. I'm gonna get things packed up because the gallon, the five gallon challenge, the whole idea is you do is you set up in a location, you trap everything that you possibly can, you exploit all the resources, and then you move on. We're out of here. The five gallon challenge I think was a success. We got to make ourselves a beautiful raccoon hat. We got to catch a skunk. We got to catch a bunch of fish and eat them too. But uh, I think I'm through. Sun's just coming up here, and I hope you guys enjoyed the survival challenge. If you guys want me to do like a two and a half gallon survival challenge or a coffee cup survival challenge, or you want me to continue with the coffee or the coffee cup, the survival challenge theme, let me know. And I hope you guys watch the videos all the way through because it really does help with the algorithm. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. I never end my videos saying peace. Catch you later.